My fellow Tubies of Planet Earth, how the heck are you? David DeFranco here from DavidDeFranco.com as well as DeFrancoGaming.com which I just relaunched not too long ago. Check it out. So I just got done viewing an excellent video response to a video response of mine to a video by Chris Perillo and Linus Sebastian, also known as Linus Tech. Concerning the future of video game consoles, and yes, I realized I just made a video about this yesterday on my channel, so I apologize for dwelling because I know a large portion of my viewers do not like gaming. What can I say? I love gaming, so I'm going to talk about it. So I just viewed this awesome video by Rich, his name is, and basically he was responding with his thoughts to my thoughts regarding the consoles and whether or not they're dying. So first off, I want to say, Rich, thank you for the excellent video. Seriously, I was not offended whatsoever because I was reading your comments saying, why are you picking on this teenager? People don't realize I'm actually 27. I look like I'm 17. I know. Believe it or not, right? Uh, but I do respect your opinion just like you respect my opinion. So for those thinking Rich was hating on me, guys, he wasn't hating me at all. He was... If anything, he was being mature and passionate, just like me. I love gaming, I love technology, so I'm passionate, so sometimes that may even come across wrong. That's just how we deliver our messages. So Rich was basically disagreeing with me altogether regarding my thoughts and consoles and why they're not gonna die and whatever. So I do wanna say, right off the bat, guys, perhaps I delivered my thoughts in not the best way possible because even Rich took my message completely wrong and out of context in my opinion. So I do want to say I do not think gaming is dead in terms of tablets and whatever device we'll have 10, 20, 30 years from now. I do not disregard that whatsoever, trust me. I mean, I'm still blown away by the fact that my iPhone has games better looking than the PlayStation 2 already does. Did I just say PlayStation weird? You know what I meant. I mean, guys, think about it. It is incredible. I'm actually capable of playing a game like Grand Theft Auto 3 or Vice City on my iPad, and it actually looks better on the iPad than it did on the PlayStation 2 years ago, and that's just one generation behind, if you're still counting PlayStation 3 as this generation, as you should, because the PlayStation 4 doesn't come out until November. So, for those confused at my original message, I was not saying... No matter the device, it's not capable of GTA 5, you know, games like GTA 5, I should say. Believe me, something like the iPhone 6 or 7, whatever it's going to be a few years from now, will be fully capable of Grand Theft Auto 5. Trust me, I am completely standing behind that statement. What I originally meant is, it's not possible on a touch screen in terms of actually playing it on a touch screen and getting that immersive experience. Now, hooking it up to your TV and using an actual game controller compatible with said device, yes, that is definitely possible. I fully realize that. I was never against that. And trust me, I'm very, very excited to see what comes out of that. And I think the Oya is a great example. Now, the Oya may not be doing that well in terms of market share, and I never expected it to because, in my eyes, it's a very niche product. You know, geeks like you and myself only really know what the Oya is. I mean... If I went to someone like my sister or my parents or my friends who aren't really into technology and gaming, they'll be like, David, what the hell is an Oya? That sounds like a cookie. But me being a geek, you being a geek, and most of the people watching this video right now, we all very well know what an Oya is. It's basically an open source video game console that delivers a different kind of gaming experience. Well, different to a certain degree, meaning games that you can already get on the iPhone or Android, but on... With the Android, did I just say the Android, the Android platform, but on a small box that connects to your television. And that right there is really cool. That idea I am completely open to. Seriously, that is awesome. So I just want to repeat myself. I did not in no way mean that devices like the iPhone and iPad are not capable at delivering games like GTA 5 because they fully are. What I meant with my original message was, like I just said, they're not capable in terms of the controls and the immersion because you can't play a game like Grand Theft Auto V on the touchscreen and expect it to be a great experience. At least for people who are nitpicky like me because you need controllers, you need that tactile feedback, you need a nice large screen. Uh, but when you hook it up to a TV, yes, that is a good experience in my opinion as long as it's optimized, as long as you get an actual controller and as long as it's marketed well. Because guys, let's face it, we cannot forget this one very important factor. It needs to sell. It needs to be created by a large brand that people can trust, whether it's Apple, Microsoft, Sony, 
Nintendo, don't really count on that. Although they're really trying to get you away from the TV. I mean, due to the recent announcements, it's pretty obvious that Nintendo is really forcing gamers, well, encouraging gamers to use that gamepad screen. The fact that you can play virtual console games on the gamepad, that right there is pretty freaking cool. So going back to what I was just saying, I do think the future is bright in terms of actual consoles and actual devices like this, iPhone, iPad, Android device. Let's face it, Blackberry is not gonna be around. Windows Phone, if Windows Phone is still around, I'm sure it will be. It's Microsoft, they got billions to spend. So Rich, that is all I was trying to say. I mean, like you, I have been gaming since the 80s and I'm sure not many people can say that, well, at least in terms of the large majority, because as you know, our YouTube viewing demographic is split up into, I think, what? 17 year olds is and under, then 18 to 24, then it goes there and beyond. And you have to be at least, what, 24, 25 to be with the gaming since the beginning, at least towards the days of when Nintendo saved the industry with the NES and the Famicom and whatever. All right, so going back to what I was saying before, it is gonna take a very strong, just a very strong product, a very strong marketing strategy for these companies to convince gamers like me and you to use one box that you can take from my house to your house to a friend's house. And that right there, trust me, I fully support. That is really cool. Again, something like the Oya or even something like this. I mean, the fact that the iPhone and yes, oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Backing up a bit. I just used Angry Birds because of what you just said, Rich. It's a cliche thing. I just say Angry Birds because the casual people out there know what Angry Birds is. But if I say something like Infinity Blade, not everybody really knows, but then again, I'm not really an Infinity Blade fan. It's cool, the graphics are impressive, and it's kind of like the benchmark title nowadays to show what a new device is. Infinity Blade 3 is a great example. I think they're up to 3, right? Uh, that they demoed on Sage when Apple introduced the iPhone 5S. And that, yes, is a great demonstration of what technology is capable of. So if my iPhone 5S can put out graphics like on, in, a, in a game like Infinity Blade, then yes, obviously we will be seeing incredible games from here on out. Now, does that mean me as a passionate gamer since the beginning wants to suddenly drop an actual dedicated video game console like an Xbox or PlayStation or a Nintendo console? Hell no, I love my consoles. And yes, I realize people out there do love PC gaming over console gaming. That's fine, I'm not saying one is better than the other. Me, obviously I prefer console gaming. I like sitting down on a couch and I know, I know, you can get that on a PC, you can hook up the Xbox 360 console, or rather the Xbox 360 controller, I meant to say. And then yes, you could game on your sofa as if you're gaming on a console, but you're actually gaming on a PC. That's pretty cool. Is that for me? No. I have always loved video game consoles, and in the foreseeable future, that's how it's gonna be until something major comes through. Now with that said, with the next generation consoles literally just a couple months away, I think Microsoft has the best, what's the word, the best vision of the future of gaming and entertainment. Now a lot of gamers are going to disagree with me here and that's fine. People are saying the PlayStation 4 is a true gaming device, but the Xbox One is not a true gaming device because it does sports and TV. Well isn't that what we geeks want? I mean I know it's what I want. I want that all in one box to deliver my TV, my gaming, my movies, my entertainment, and even a kick-ass web browsing experience. And yes, obviously you can get that on current day consoles, but in my opinion, the whole web browsing on the TV experience still has a very long way to go. I just think it's sloppy. It doesn't feel that very well done, obviously, because you're freaking browsing the internet on a TV. It's really not intended for that, but hopefully a couple years from now, they'll perfect it. So the only thing I'm trying to say here is, if anything, I think Microsoft has the best grip on the future of gaming and entertainment because they're starting out early, they're taking risks, and sure people are, you know, backlashing against it because Microsoft is trying something different because honestly, I believe Microsoft is doing something more exciting with the Xbox One than Sony is doing with the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation 4 is just that, the PlayStation 4. It's the PlayStation 3 Part 2. Better graphics, better performance, better specs overall, better games, but is that gonna be good? I mean, yeah, of course it is, but is it truly next generation? Is it truly unique? In my opinion, no. That doesn't make it a bad experience. I don't want people back and say, David, you don't know gaming. I do know gaming. I know gaming very well. I just think Sony is playing it very safe, where Microsoft, on the other hand, is actually trying new things with the Kinect. Yeah, I realize the 
Kinect can be gimmicky here and there, but still, they're forcing it on their consumers. They're putting it in the box because they want their consumers and their customers and their gamers, whatever you want to call them, to try something new, to embrace new technology. They're not playing it safe. They're taking risks, and I give Microsoft full props for that. All right, Rich, I know I went from gaming on my Xbox 360 to the iPhone to something like the Xbox One and whatever, but that's just what I'm getting at here. I mean, I think the future of gaming is very bright. I think it's exciting as hell. And like you're saying, what kind of true gamer wants video game consoles to die? Nobody does. I mean, the gaming market wouldn't be where it is today if it weren't for gaming consoles. And that's pretty much a fact. And it's going to take some true innovation and some true optimization with these kinds of devices in the future to replace that kind of experience that we're currently getting out of consoles. Okay, so let's recap this video real quick because I know I tend to ramble and I love to talk about gaming and technology. It's practically my life. I love this stuff. This is my final thought, guys. Gaming consoles, as of today and as of at least 10, 20 years from now, I don't see them going anywhere. Like I said earlier, it's going to take a breakthrough device to change the gaming market, to get us away from those big consoles and instead to resort to something like the iPhone. And let's not forget, it's going to take these developers and these first party companies to open up their licensing to get games like Mario and Halo and whatever. And yes, I say Mario, it's a Jersey thing, don't get mad. People seem to freak out, I say things differently. Bagel, 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 who cares? But that's just what it's going to take. Until these companies open up and, and they share their gaming library with other companies, like, you know, Jack and Daxter, and I'm not a big Jack and Daxter fan, like, you know, The Last of Us. Or Mario. Going back to Mario. The day we see a Mario game on an iPhone device, that is the day the gaming market is changing. Mark my words on that. The day Nintendo opens up their licensing rights to things like Mario and Donkey Kong and Zelda, that right there is a huge turning point where we go in an entirely different direction and things are going to dramatically change. So that's all I have to say. Of course, this video is probably going to be over 10 minutes. That's just me. I didn't plan on doing this video today, but I watched Rich's passionate video, and I say that with the utmost respect, passionate, because I love finding other people with passion, and honestly, I never even knew of Rich until now, and he has more subscribers than I do, so he's obviously been around for a little while, and he's doing something good, so I'm going to subscribe to him right after I'm done making this video, and I encourage you to subscribe to him as well. His link to his channel is right below. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate your support. Let me know what you think below regarding my opinion on the future of gaming in general, um, your opinion on Rich's opinion regarding the future of gaming, and whether or not you agree with neither of us or both of us in some form or fashion. And now, guys, I'm finally done. I don't usually record videos at night, but hey, it's whatever. And yes, if you notice this, I'm trying to get rid of it. I think I get bit by a spider. I feel so tingly all of a sudden. Like I could suddenly climb buildings and swing from the Empire State Building to Fluffy's Cafe to get myself a cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. I can't even talk right. So thank you guys so much for watching. Your support is amazing and I will see you in my weekend vlog on Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Peace.